Hello everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Saturday, February 18, 2012, and this is a cap and nods device update from the garage. Um, right here, you can see that I have put together uh, a piece of plate glass with all of, most of my components on it right now. I have the uh, Motorola R2670 service monitor warming up in front of me. I have my little cube space heater blowing behind me and I have my 35,000 BTU kerosene heater in front of me going in the garage. It's about mm, 50 degrees in the garage right now and uh, it's, I would say 40 degrees outside so I've got, uh, I've got a little bit of temperature differential between outside and inside and I'll be out here for a little while longer working on the, on the coil. Uh, right now the intent is to start performing some tests and to find what the natural resonant frequency is of the larger ferrite core now as opposed to the smaller ferrite core that I was using. The larger ferrite core is uh, courtesy of WES 351. So WES, thank you very much. Appreciate that. And uh, hope to be uh, publishing some results real soon. The reason for creating a new coil on a larger core is because the natural resonant frequency of the smaller core that I started with was 10.965 megahertz and that is out of the range of the signal generators that I want to use to inject signal into the core to uh, probe for the anomalies that Wesley and Arunas had observed with their cores. So winding it on the larger core should, should give me a much lower natural resonant frequency and it should bring the uh, oscillator injection frequencies down into the range where the uh, um, the 1 megahertz RF generator and the 100 kilohertz audio generator that I have can inject signals from. Okay so moving on to the build itself in this first photograph uh, I'm holding the larger bell-shaped ferrite core with the one-half turn uh, braided copper wire primary. You see that I have the, the ferrite core very well insulated now with electrical tape as well as the ends of the braided wire so that uh, when I'm injecting high voltage across this I don't get any arcing effect to the ferrite core itself. Here's a look at the back side showing how I just have it uh, taped into place before I start uh, covering it up with more electrical tape. Here is the the primary side of the core wound with the 50 turn primary. In this case this is uh, 46 or 47 turns simply because with the gauge wire that I used I did not have uh, did not have enough room to wind all 50 turns on there but that's that's okay this is close enough for government work as they say. Here is the 50 turn coil now covered with electrical tape and the 15 turn primary on top of it and I think to be uh, to be consistent with the uh, smaller number of turns I think I only ended up using 14 turns on this particular primary. Here is the primary side of the ferrite core fully taped up and insulated and here is the secondary side of the ferrite core with the 22 turn bifiller coil wound on it. You see how again the bifiller windings are parallel all the way around the core even on the inside as well. In this photograph I'm holding the fully assembled larger ferrite bell shaped core now together with my thumb and index finger and uh, the the smaller ferrite core that I was testing with originally to give you an idea of the difference in size between the two sets of coils. So not only is the ferrite core larger, I'm also using heavier gauge wire. And here is the completed larger ferrite core held together with uh, bands of electrical tape over the top and underneath and uh, pieces of paper to establish a uniform gap in between the, uh, the break of the core. Also you see the air variable capacitor on the right wired across the one half turn primary braided wire and in series with the high voltage generator arc. 
This is the waveform display of the R2670 service monitor. You'll notice that uh, my center frequency is 2.86 megahertz in this and my range is plus and minus 1 megahertz. So the frequency sweep of this display is showing 1.86 to 3.86 megahertz. I have a primary resonance right around 2.86 and I also have uh, a secondary resonance that's uh, up a little bit higher, about 350 kilohertz higher. Changing my range now to plus and minus 100 kilohertz allows, allows me to zoom in on where the exact resonant frequency is and you can see in this, in this shot here it is showing 2.86 megahertz. Here is the stack of mica capacitors that I had to add to the air variable in order to get the resonant frequency down into the range that uh, would be usable with the uh, signal generators that I have for the project. So that's all for now from the garage. I do broadcast live uh, on Justin TV. That's justin.tv forward slash zero fossil fuel if you'd like to follow along live from time to time. I do try to remember to send out tweets before I go live so that uh, my audience can know when I'm live and online and uh, boring everybody half to death while, I'm, while they watch me wind coils and such. But uh, it, 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 is, it is fun to get together to chat with the guys. There's a lot of, lot of interesting discussion that goes on in the chat room. So hope you can join us there. Hope you will subscribe to my channel if you have not and tell everybody about what we're doing. Everyone take care. Peace.